I'm Deli Dutton, and today I've gathered up all of my green art supplies. I've got crayons, colored pencils, markers, paint markers, gel pens, watercolor paint, and gouache. Oh, and I have some green washi tape too. And I'm going to try and use all of these in one art piece. I first saw this trend done by drawing with waffles. She's done a bunch of different colors, and I was reminded of it when Casey Golden did it recently. And I was thinking, I wanted to try it, and it's almost St. Patrick's Day. It's the perfect time to do something very green. A while ago, I had a bunch of colored lead for my mechanical pencil that erased really well, but all I have left is the light blue, so I'm going to use a light green colored pencil to do the sketch. It does not erase very well, but I think any mistakes will be covered up by the other art supplies. I decided to draw a little fairy in the wild, surrounded by grass and other plants. I have a few grayish greens and a metallic, so I decided that she'd have a little watering can so she could take care of the garden. Maybe she's in charge of putting the dew on the plants in the morning. Her name is Sprout. She's maybe a foot tall. She likes the greenest gardens best, with lots of long grass, bushes, and trees. If she comes across a yard that is too bare, she'll plant things in it. She gets mad when humans tear out her hard work and will just try harder. It's not just weeds, okay? Those are important plants. I think her magic gets kind of weak if she's in a place that's too industrial, though. Because Sprout the Fairy is green, she also gets energy from the sun. But she prefers a slightly shady area because too much sun will burn her. She also eats bugs, fruits, and honey for extra nutrition. If you leave little treats out for her, Seeds, snacks, candy, or other interesting little trinkets, she might leave something for you in return. Stuff like acorns that have been carved with pretty patterns, woven bits of grass or flower crowns, or crow's feathers. But she does like to stay hidden, so she tends to retreat to more overgrown areas during the day. What is your favorite green? I like a pretty emerald or peacock green, and mint green is pretty too. I think my favorite is teal though, especially when paired with red or pink. I went through each group of art supplies before starting with the next. I started with the markers, but I think if I tried this again, I'd start with watercolors. After that, I'd do markers and colored pencils, then gouache, gel pens, and then crayons in that order. It's hard to layer things over crayon and the gel pens wipe away too easily. I made it work, but I think it would have been easier to build up the colors that way. At the end, I go back through some of the different supplies just to add some more details. Cat has decided this video needs purring, and I can't say that she's wrong. Most helpful kitty. I think it'd also be nice to have some colored micron pens for inking on this challenge. Even the not glittery or metallic gel pens are kind of shiny. So I ended up doing most of the line art with marker, and that made the line art a bit thicker than I'd like. Sprout's little face kind of got muddled because of this, 
which was disappointing because I thought it was a cute, mischievous little expression to begin with. It might have been helpful to sort the greens into groups of bluish greens, yellowish greens, and regular green. There are so many different supplies that it would have helped to organize them and like have one group for the background, one for the foreground, and one for the character. I just kind of went by whim and didn't really plan it out at all, so it was a bit challenging to keep them from getting muddled. I really like how the trees and leaves in the background and foreground turned out. It made it look like this picture has a lot of depth. I might have to play with that a bit more. And using the washi tape in the foreground was interesting. I don't know how effective it is, but the texture is neat. Normally if I use washi tape in a picture, it's for background pop of color or to fill in clothing. But after doing the grass thing with my extra thin washi tape, I think it'd be neat to try like a fringe of colors, like a piñata or a flapper dress. When I make something, it helps to research stuff and watch others, but I think I learn the most just by trying it myself and making mistakes. And if I'm lucky, there's something that works well and now I have a neat new trick that I can use in other projects. Take chances, get messy, make mistakes. Art journey, yeah! I think I'd like to try this again with another color. Make some new mistakes and learn new stuff. Thanks for watching, like, and subscribe to continue on this art journey with me.